Stable. Stable, yes, that's very important. What else? Converges. It converges. That's actually the ultimate uh, uh, criterion that converges as you refine the time step size, right? Okay, what else? Accuracy and precision. So that is basically a stronger criterion than the fact that uh, it converges if stability is uh, guaranteed. Accuracy basically tells you as you re refine delta t, as you make delta t smaller, not only does the solution goes towards what you want, the true solution, but also it goes towards what you want at a fast enough rate, right? A first order method, as you, if you decrease your delta t by a factor of 10, the error goes down by a factor of 10. That's okay, but a second order method would decrease the error by a factor of 100 every time you decrease delta t by a factor of 10. So basically we want to uh, accuracy, accuracy. So that's basically we want high order and we can show that or uh, attempt to derive a scheme with high order using Taylor series analysis. Okay, we also want stability. So there are two aspects about stability. One aspect is the scheme has to be able to solve DUDT equal to zero. So that is uh, zero stability. The second criterion, that's what we discussed uh, in the last lecture is what? Eigenvalue. Eigenvalue stability. That is saying that even a scheme is able to solve DUDT equal to zero, it may not be equally good at solving all kinds of equations. Some schemes are good at solving some kind of equations and other schemes are good at solving other kind of equations. They all solve equations okay as you refine your delta t. But for some schemes, you need a lot smaller delta t to achieve the similar type of uh, uh, stability uh, characteristics. So what do we use to characterize the kind of equations a scheme is good at solving? So for Ford Euler, how do we characterize what kind of problem Ford Euler is good at? What kind of other problems midpoint rule is good at? We remember we are plotting something like this, right? For forward Euler, we have a region like this. For midpoint, we have a region like this. Region what was the region of stability or stability region? Many people are actually always confused with the stability region because there are two ways to represent it. One way is to represent, they all relate to solving this scalar OD, du dt equal to lambda u. But one way, the standard way to write it, it's saying the stability region is the real part of delta uh, lambda times delta t and imaginary part of lambda times delta t, right? That's kind of standard way to write the stability region of a scheme. But you can also write it as a space of real and imaginary parts of lambda itself, in which the stability region actually shrinks and expands depending on your delta t, right? If you make delta t to be small enough, the stability region will be huge. If your delta t is relatively small, your stability region is going to shrink. All right, so that's for all the schemes we have discussed before. But what I said just now is actually not generally true. So what I said is, once you make delta t smaller and smaller, the stability region expands. Once you make delta t larger and larger, the stability region shrinks. That's actually not generally true. There are some schemes where the most stable version is actually when you have a delta t that is very, very large. What kind of scheme is that? is the kind of scheme we started discussing last lecture, that is implicit schemes.